Bismillah. In this video, we are going to explore the next uh, period, which is called the embryonic period. It refers to, uh, you know, the period whereby it is from week two after implementation of the zygote to week eight. So once at this at this period, it is not called, uh, you know, zygote anymore. It is called embryo. Okay, embryo. Hence the name embryonic period. So it starts from week two until week eight. Okay, after fertilization, which the major organs develop. Uh, it is nearly one inch in size and almost all organs are there. Just that they are not fully developed or functioning. As you can see, this is a real life zygote here. Uh, sorry, embryo, uh, embryo, embryo here. As you can see here, all the organs are actually present like you see you can see the leg okay and then the hands even the fingers there the eye all the major organs are actually there present just that it is not fully functioning yet it is not fully developed yet but is it present the answer is yes okay it is present there okay and imagine this and this is like a size of you know one inch here it's like a one inch or more more or less one inch here satu inch itu macam dua hingga tiga centimeter Right, so it's very small, uh, okay. But you know, Subhanallah, uh, it is actually already all the all, all the limbs, all the major organs are already present. Now, the important part that you want to actually know, okay, under the embryonic period, and you know, future husbands and wives, yeah, future father and mother, okay, especially when you are married and then your wife and the mother is actually pregnant so you really want to actually know this is a sensitive period what we what, which we call critical period so embryonic period is the critical period if there's something really disturbing that is happening during this period that would cause a lot of harm to the developing baby because this is a period whereby it is very sensitive it is a time during which certain environmental influences can have an impact on the development of the in infant right so uh, what are these environmental factors we are talking about the 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 danger of it okay, okay so uh, we call it as teratogens okay so teratogens refers to any factors that can cause a birth defect okay so to kecacatan pada janin Okay. So, uh, agents are uh, basically uh, teratogens refers to, uh, you know, bahan-bahan uh, ataupun substance ataupun anything that uh, is considered a factor that can cause birth defect. For example, drugs, chemicals and viruses even. Yeah? So, that's why, uh, uh, you know, certain uh, medications or what when you are pregnant, right? So, for husband, you need to remind your future wife nanti. Uh, for future mothers, nanti, you need to remind yourself that, you know, once you are pregnant here, you are more sensitive to things and you need to really take care of what you take. Okay, and as drug, okay, tak boleh suka-suka makan apa-apa ubat ke, whenever you go to a doctor's visit ke, you need to always tell the doctor that, you know, uh, I'm, uh, you know, pregnant, contohnya, kalau dia tak perasan lah kan, kalau dia tak tahu awal-awal tu kan, okay, so you need to tell them that you are pregnant so that, you know, doctors know whether the drugs that they are prescribing, whether the medication that they are prescribing is actually uh, safe for a pregnant woman or not because that may the chemicals in even medicines yeah, can act as teratogens that can cause birth defect okay that's why kalau pergi pharmacy pun when you buy certain medications or what uh, you actually look at the uh, you actually look at the uh, you know uh, instruction and then you notice that okay whether this is safe for pregnant woman and nursing woman nursing means menyusu anak eh uh, because that could actually affect okay the production that may uh, you know uh, cause something some unwanted things to the baby lah right so this includes drug chemicals okay uh, you know it's not just what you consume through your mouth but anything like macam uh, that's why vaccine vaccination okay they require more data before they allow pregnant woman and nursing woman to take the vaccination uh, okay because they are more sensitive there they don't want to actually uh, you know make it a teratogen a possible ter the vaccine okay can also be a possible teratogen uh, to the to the to the baby lah actually so that's why uh, you know chemicals are also should be sensitive uh, you know generally you know alcohol even non-muslim pun what to need alcohol they wouldn't drink it because it can be you know alcohol is known to be a teratogen as well it can cause birth defect to the uh, baby inside the womb eh? now virus can also be there though. so there are certain you know viruses that actually attack uh, the the child okay the, the the fetus in the womb 
So that's why they can also serve as teratogen. But the main point of this is that teratogens are basically any factors that can cause birth defect. Okay, so in this picture example, smoking definitely, okay, is the chemical of nicotine there. Uh, do you know, these are among the few examples of teratogens, yeah, like marijuana that can cause, you know, easily, you know, the, 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 the development of a baby that is easily disturbed, startled, or, you know, easily get nervous. Alcohol lah, macam-macam lah ni, you can read on yourself, by yourself. Uh, nicotine, so no smoking, uh, because it can cause, you know, uh, low birth weight, miscarriage, and etc. And, yeah, even caffeine, okay, be careful lah, eh? tea and coffee, it may also lead, it or become a factor, a teratogenal factor, uh, that may cause miscarriage or low birth weight. Okay, so, so these are among the few teratogens that you want to actually know so that you can remind your future spouse. Yeah? So remember, embryon, embryonic period is considered the critical period because teratogens can effectively, negatively affect the uh, developing uh, you know, embryo inside the womb.